Currently, are the impediments that are there any impediments that the UC is facing in moving forward with the program and also moving forward with the various offers of the not at the moment. We are we're moving full steam ahead. Um, one of the some of the things that we look at and understand for that are our longer lead items, as I had mentioned, is going through just the full environmental process to make sure that we are in fact disclosing everything that's related to this project and impacts on communities, um, which is the responsible way to uh, to proceed on a project like this. Also, going through our permitting applications, which will be filed with uh, the Army Corps and the uh, State uh, DEC, Department of Environmental Conservation. Um, so right now we are we're optimistic that we're able to meet our the timelines that we've talked about. Uh, <coughs> if, if, if you need to identify an organization you are speaking about, that would be helpful. Judith Burning, Falcon High Road Community Board, Roselle Hunt Committee. Uh, welcome to Roselle Hunt. I'm one of the visitor center for the Historical Society, and so many times people come in and say to me, "How do I get to Long Island City?" And I say, "That's a challenge." So now at least in the future we can point them to a ferry. If you go to our tram station, you're going to see that the tram platform is, has doors and a roof and a shelter for winter. It's bad enough waiting at the tram in January, February, March with very little shelter. There's no way you can put people on a barge even for 10 minutes waiting out there bobbing in the water in the middle of winter without walls or some kind of protection because it's damn cold in the river. And you have to consider you just, it can't be something that's, you know, it's great in the summer, but it has to be a barge that has some kind of protection because we don't want any frozen passengers. Sure, that's a great, that's a really great point. Um, and actually, I think we may have, uh, we may have glazed over what we were talking about. Um, with respect to the barges that we were talking about earlier, uh, we are anticipating that we will put canopies on the top and windscreens around the sides to provide exactly that kind of protection. Our experience with the East River Ferry, and this is where the lessons from that experience have really informed how we're developing and building this project. Um, the lesson there is that our ridership drops drastically in the winter um, because people do have other options and because we don't have great shelters on the existing system. So and one of the first things we said as soon as we started building the new ones is we have to make sure that we have enclosures, that there are windscreens, that there's canopies, uh, and all the things to protect you from the elements. So those are definitely part of the, uh, the basic designs for the uh, ferry landings. And you will be responsible for partially rebuilding the <coughs> oil dock because I know the oil dock seems to go up and down itself. Sure, so we actually, uh, surprisingly, it was today or yesterday? Today. Today. Uh, we actually had divers in the water um, in and around the oil dock uh, doing our waterfront inspection as we make, make progress towards this project. Um, and so we will evaluate as we go on as to what exactly needs to be done in order to build the landing. Um, I will flag, the mo what we need to do is just get into the water so there may be a gangway or a, or a small gangway bridge that goes over it and into the water. Um, what we're trying to do is make sure that we can deliver this as quickly as possible and without replacing an entire pier. That's one of the things we have to keep in mind. And my last question is, <laughs> We once had a ferry many, many moons ago, and it was great going down to Wall Street in the morning, but the currents going back in the afternoon made a half a 20 minute ride into an hour ride. What do your what do your schedule show for the return trip uh, when the currents change and the tide is going against you at four or five o'clock in the afternoon? Uh, do you have statistics on that? Sure, I mean our existing East River ferry goes both directions all day long, so I think uh, well, the kinds of vessels that we're talking about, which are similar to those that we have today, are definitely able to overcome the, the conditions in the East River. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, I'm Aaron Hamburger. I live at 455 Main Street, and I'm a member of this rear council. Um, on the evening, afternoon and evening run, Will it be a wine bar? I'm sorry, Russell. I got a comment and a comment is in your planning, please make sure 
already a plan. And then we've got to work with Rita to make sure that the Red Bus <laughs> incorporates the ferry in their, in their round. And the question is, um, Cornell will be our neighbor in a year or two, um, announced that they are going to contribute about $500,000 a year to support the ferry operation, which is great. The question is, is the Cornell contribution going to be a substitute for some of the New York City contributions, or will the Cornell be an addition to what New York City is um, providing? Sure. Um, so, yes, Cornell is a terrific partner, and we do talk to them often, and, and certainly, in fact, uh, it was not long ago that we were talking about the commitments that they that they had made as part of their uh, as part of their process. Um, I don't want to speak too early about exactly where each you know uh, set of money is coming from with respect to the ongoing subsidy. EDC and the city will be working together in order to uh, allocate those costs over time. Um, but of course, the contribution from Cornell will be part of the discussion and how it gets rolled out. But it's not that you know a specific amount of money is only for one round. We are thinking system-wide about how all, all this plays together in order to bring ferry service to Roosevelt Island and connect it, in fact, to the rest of the city. One of the things we didn't mention earlier is that while we aren't able to provide transfers from MTA, once you are on the ferry system, you are able to transfer to other ferries. So if you are on the Astoria route and you want to go to the Rockaways, you can do that. You can go to Pier 11 and switch to the Rockaway route and head down to the beach. So a lot of options are open to us. Good. Thank you. Hello, my name is John Doherty. I'm a member of River Council for Island House. Um, and I want to thank the EDC, first of all, for its leadership on this project. Um, in planning the route, the Astoria route, which is the route that um, would include Roosevelt Island, I'm curious why um, the next stop uh, before crossing the East River isn't to this point, because that would seem to um, provide a great many more options for then transferring um, if one were going down to Brooklyn. As it is, as the route is, when we have to cross the East River, then cross back to Brooklyn, um, and it would seem that if you uh, stop at the point before crossing, that, that uh, the flexibility would be greatly expanded. Sure, that's a good question, um, and certainly part of the, what we're looking at as far as the route planning and, and what went into that. Uh, one of the things I do want to really flag is that as we're doing it, the, the distance over the river is not too long. Um, but the challenge at Long Island City, which is one that we were sort of coping with from the get-go, is that Hunter's Point is already a, is a single slip landing that is near capacity for vessels. So we could not bring the two additional uh, routes that need to serve Long Island City to Hunter's Point. There's just not enough uh, slip capacity. You couldn't bring boats in often enough as it is today. Uh, in the peak hour, they have six departures an hour. Uh, so they're getting close to the amount that they can run. So that's why we have an additional landing, which is at Long Island City, providing the connectivity to other places. So that was one of the main, one of the considerations when we were looking through it. Um, the other thing, and not to say that these are not uh, firm routes, these are. This is what we're starting with and what we've sent to our operators. Um, but one of the other things that is nice about ferries is that as you learn about them, we can understand ridership patterns and ridership behavior and, and look at these. These are uh, landings that can be connected differently, much like bus stops. So um, as this is a learning process, we of course will learn, but we are, we are pretty sure that this is the best route system uh, looking at the full citywide scale. Thank you. Um, you hinted that um, uh, the ferries could play a role in possible evacuation under extreme circumstances. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious about uh, what your experience shows in terms of when the, the ferries have to shut down in terms of um, extreme conditions, wind, storms. Sure. Um, yeah, ferries, uh, like all modes of transportation, are susceptible to certain uh, extreme events. Uh, one that tends to be the most challenging for us is icing in the East River. Uh, we had one of the worst winters this past year, um, and it, it left us with, I think it was about three or four days where we had um, uh, interruptions in service. Because of the East River and how it flows, it actually, as a tidal estuary, is in and out all day long. And when we have problems with ice, it actually just sort of 
dissipates within a couple of minutes. So usually what happens is we'll have to skip a stop once in a while, or we'll have to shut down a certain segment of the route or delay certain uh, boats. But by and large, other than icing, which is not as common as it was this past winter, um, ferries are very resilient and can handle themselves in most, uh, in most scenarios. I'm going to keep it I'm also a member of the Bureau of Common Council, and I live in Force Point on Main Street. And I was, I was wondering, and I'm sure this, these statistics are known, I don't think I saw the proposal in your presentation. How many, what is your projection of how many people on Roosevelt Island would go during the 8 to 9 rush hour, which is really the only one that the impacts on the other transportation systems like the tram, which is very much overcrowded during that hour when many people get up on the platform. How many people do you anticipate uh, from, say, that it would ordinarily take the tram, for example, would now take the ferry? Will that help us with our tram problem, which is like the first, because they're really in the building? So that's my first one. Sure. Um, I was just checking because I've, I've keep some of the numbers. I'm trying to keep all of them in my head for, for all 21 of the landings and six routes. Um, on the Astoria route, we're projecting about 4,000 riders in the peak period. So in the two and a half to three hours that we'll be running peak service, which is what we talked about, 20 to 30 minute um, headways, then we're expecting on the full route to have around 4,000 passengers boarding. Um, That's per, per week, per, per weekday. Or, and during, on, a, yeah. on an average week. Yeah. And what about from Roosevelt Island? I'd have to double check and get back to you for the specific. Um, so the reason I ask is because I work on the second and the first, and for me it's perfect. But there aren't very many people. I know most of them here. <laughs> and I don't know how many people work on Wall Street. But the, the bottom line is we're going to be a small, we're not going to have a huge component. I mean, eventually when the story is gets built out, the building. Complexes, they're going to have more people from there and from Long Island City than we have here. I'm wondering if in the future we won't have enough ridership and if there's some expectation of how much ridership we need to have in order to maintain ferry service here. Because sure. get a new administration, they don't want to subsidize as much. Is there some number that, that, that you know, we have to meet in order to be one of the ferry stops? Yeah, that's a really good. That's a really good question, um, and one that shows a lot of insight into sort of how transportation planning evolves. Uh, transportation planning definitely does look at things like ridership. It does look at things like operating costs and where the nearest other locations are where you are providing service. And one of the most important things that we've learned from the East River Ferry that we take throughout, and especially at a location as you've mentioned, where ridership might not be the highest among all of the routes, is that in fact high lo high density locations where there are a lot of riders are able to support some of the lower density areas or places where there are fewer riders. So for example, Hunters Point South and North Williamsburg are very high traffic generating um, landings right now. And because Greenpoint is connected along the way towards, uh, uh, along the way, Greenpoint, which doesn't have near as high a ridership number itself, is able to be supported. So Roosevelt Island is strategically located between Long Island City, which is one of the highest ridership locations uh, that we protected in the city um, for the new system, and Astoria, which is the anchor point uh, for the, north, the northern point of the Astoria route. So all of those things kind of come together and help make a, a great case for why we'll be able to sustain service at Roosevelt Island. And just to add on to that, um, it's part of our um, RFP process, we've also requested um, for respondents and they know that we're interested in committing to five years of service with a potential five-year extension after that. So there is a commitment for, on the behalf of the city, to, in, to see that this citywide ferry service works and does well. My name is Ivan Bosbach. Um, I'm one of the representatives uh, for the South Town buildings here at the Common Council, about the report of the park. I also represent the Roosevelt Island Parents Network, which is a community organization of over 500 families here in Roosevelt Island. And two questions. Um, you mentioned $55 million in the city capital, and also you mentioned that you want to begin the planning design and even construction already in the beginning of 2016, which is very soon. One of the questions I always get here in the community is, is the funding completely secure? Do we need some other funds to be coming here from the other or somewhere else for the dock for the landing for the barge? Uh, so the $55 million is 
we have our, our CP, which is what we need in order to build these landings. We have the money uh, that is secure and it is going straight to build ferry landings throughout the city. So you have all the money that you need? We, we have all of it, yes, because we need, in fact, we needed it quick because we needed to build it, as you've said, so quickly. So, uh, yes, that money is in our budget and we're able to use it. Um, we are already using it for things like the environmental review and design, um, which is already underway. Great. And my other question basically is just a comment. I'm sure you have done your studies, so you know that we have a lot of seniors and a lot of disabled um, citizens and a lot of children here on Northern Island. Island. So just please take that into consideration when planning the rates, maybe the possibility of reductions for certain types of residents. Also when planning the room for storage of strollers or of wheelchairs or bikes on the ferries and also um, when planning the shelter, as mentioned before, because we have new ones and similar situations. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Hi, thank you for coming tonight and thank you for all the information. Um, my question is kind of a general one. Oh, I'm sorry, Sherry Halstein, I'm a member of the Common Council, the Residents Association. Um, my question really is we have all of these narrow streets or you know these single streets or single lane or sometimes two-way traffic streets, but the street that you're going to be using to build the dock where, where you you know where the dock will be positioned is also a street that is used by Cornell mm -hmm. and just out of curiosity I'm wondering if you guys have arranged your scheduling so that you will be able to have whatever equipment there on the street but without blocking the street or how that's going to work. Are you just to clarify, are you talking about construction and ability yeah. to build it? Yes. Okay, yeah, so actually one of the good news things as part of our design and part of what we're doing is that most of the construction is actually happening off site. We build the barge uh, that's already being built that gets outfitted in a yard. Um, when the time comes and we're actually ready to place the landings, we float it in. We put these four spud barge, uh, spud pods, which are these vertical poles that go into the riverbed. Um, those are what hold it in place. So those get installed, and then you've got a barge that's in place. The only thing that happens on the upland uh, is that we build the gangway, which will extend, that's the walkway, that extends to the esplanade, and then there's a break in the fence and a security gate. So there's really very little upland infrastructure that needs to be placed. Um, I think the only thing we have considered is also uh, the potential need for utility connections. But other than that, so that's trenching and some minor work. Uh, we really anticipate very little disruption to upland areas and communities. Good. I'm looking forward to putting my bike on it and doing riding somewhere. Thank you. <laughs> Instead of in circles here. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Adib Mansu. I'm with the 575 Main Street, and we're, we're a common council member. Um, I have a question about uh, safety and security, um, and whether it's integrated with the uh, NYPD or, or REAC and the public safety. And how is that uh, being addressed? Sure. Um, so in terms of safety, this is something that we usually get during our outreach meetings as well. Um, we will be coordinating with the NYPD and as well as local enforcement bodies um, at, at various places to ensure that whenever the ferry service is not in operation, meaning hours after 10 p.m., that you know there's either someone on patrol just to make sure that the landing is is okay and no there's no nuisance activity taking place um, so that's a part of our plan in terms of outreach with uh, additional agencies or regulatory partners um, and as well ferry landings do have security cameras some of the landings do have uh, security cameras as well to take any surveillance so that is part of our commitment as well um, to ensure safety and security the other part i'll just add on to that is that uh, as as, some, as an agency who's building all these landings, we do work with the U.S. Coast Guard, and so this, as, as a maritime facility, uh, is governed by the Coast Guard, and so there are certain things with it related to what's called the facility, facility security plans, uh, and those are approved by the Coast Guard, and those are where we would talk about things like access to the landing, allowing people to wait on the barge, and making sure that the gates and the security is all up to, up to par. Great. Thank you so much. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> My name is Ellen Pauly. I'm, I'm, I'm at 531 Main Street. I'm a VERA member and also on the community board. And I apologize if I ask the same question that you might have already, um, but I also have some hearing impairment, so it's 
hard to hear you. Um, we, you, you had, you had mentioned that you're going to be having, uh, you're going to be having shelter on the barge. Will you also be having <coughs> heat lamps or any kind of heating way of heating the, the area? Because if we have to wait for 15 or 20 minutes to have the hour for a boat to come, it's going to be really cold. Sure. At this juncture, we're not planning to put heating on these landings. It's uh, considered more like a, a bus stop, but with, with actually having more shelter than you would, or more wind protection than you would have. Um, because we're on the water, it poses certain challenges, um, and it's also not a cost that we had planned for. So right now, we're planning to do with windscreens and with uh, canopies in order to provide protection from the elements. Okay. One other question, which is, it looks as though you can, you can transfer and you can actually get from Roosevelt Island to Rockaway. Will this be, I, I know there are different, you're using different ferry providers, so will they be, will they be able to use the same metro card and have a free transfer? Sure, so I guess one thing to clarify is that we will not be on the metro card system. So because the metro card is actually, if you believe it, over 20 years old now, um, they are phasing it out and as part of the next capital plan for the MCA is actually to be creating the next uh, upgraded system. So they've advised us not to invest in infrastructure that will be obsolete in very short order. So we are planning to have our own ticketing system that is independent from the metro card. Um, but you have a free transfer? <clears throat> there will, we're not having a free transfer between the MTA subways and buses to our ferry. But once you are on a ferry, you are able to transfer to different ferries throughout the citywide ferry system. <coughs> Correct. Are there any other questions? Um, and again, I apologize also if you said this. Is it going to be a floating dock? Yes. Okay, so it is going to be a floating dock. Not yes. A stop. Right. Okay. Correct. Oh, and by the way, where's Matt? We sure all have a moment of silence for Matthew Katz, who got the tram on the metro car. Some of you live there. Look at all the Are you going to be able to work your magic with this, maybe? <laughs> with the red buses, as was mentioned earlier, and looking at making sure that um, folks are able to, uh, and we've always planned for people to be able to bring their bicycles on the ferry, things like that. Um, as I had mentioned earlier, we're not integrating on the metro card. However, uh, being here at a central hub of transportation on Roosevelt Island, we do hope that we're able to really capitalize on the various different modes that are intersecting here. I'm talking about all over the city, that there was some master plan of having buses to meet the ferry. I'm sorry, I don't know. Okay. I have a quick question. Is EPC going to be rehabbing the oil dock? So, as I was mentioning earlier, we had divers in the water today 
day to do a di an inspection. Um, we are not planning right now to be rehabilitating the full dock. What we are doing is looking for ways that, with the gangway, we can very safely allow people to get there over into the barge. Uh, we do know that there is a structure there and that there are some challenges, um, but I don't want to overcommit as we're just looking to see what we can do in order to get the barge over. And one last suggestion from the Historical Society. I'd like to suggest the ferry be our ferry, or one that the song can be named Minnehaha. That's our original name. And there was always a New York City ferry named Minnehaha. The last ferry to serve the island was called the Welfare. I don't think we want the Welfare. <laughs> but I strongly suggest, as Honor Historical Society president, that we honor our original name. Because no one can spell it anyhow. But we'll need to spell it. I was going to ask how we were going to need a sign for it. So we'll make sure.